Great. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, today we're going to have a technical interview workshop with Facebook. Uh, Pooja, would you like to take it away? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Pooja. Um, and I'm from Facebook. Uh, I'm a software engineer on the Messenger uh, Rooms team, uh, which is a product that started last year after the pandemic hit, so it's still pretty new. Um, and today we're going to be doing a technical interview prep workshop for, for you guys. So uh, we're going to be going through some interview questions, uh, general tips to do better in interviews, and like how you can prepare for those um, technical interviews. Um, I feel like it's something that like I've struggled with in the past, just trying to like go through all these different kinds of questions and like know, knowing how to um, just be present in the moment and like think effectively while you're trying to communicate with the interviewer and get to a solution. So I hope I can uh, help you with some um, useful tips on how to um, go about those kind of interview uh, situations. Uh, we're also going to be having Shivansh uh, from Facebook, um, and I think he works on the WhatsApp side, uh, but he's running a few minutes late, so he's going to be joining us hopefully soon. Um, till then, uh, I, you guys can go ahead and check in uh, on Piazza here. Uh, this is going to help us make sure that uh, the recruiters can reach out to you in case there's uh, like hiring positions opening up or anything like that. So if you wanna stay updated with like uh, the different job openings and positions and internships and everything, I think this would be the best way to stay in touch with the Facebook team. Uh, so you can know about all the, uh, all the different opportunities that we might have in the, in the coming days. Okay, I'm gonna leave this here for a few more minutes uh, just so you guys can check in. Just to let you guys know, this is for Facebook recruiting and not like the attendance points for Hack Illinois as an event. Sorry, one second. Um, uh, Beth, can you let me know whenever Shivansh is here? Just because I think if I'm sharing my screen, I can't look at the Zoom um, at the same time. So if, if he joins, can you just let me know? Okay. Yep, I'll give you a heads up. Okay. Um, um, again, We can't see the check-in code anymore. Oh, yeah, sorry. I just had to come back to the Zoom just to uh, see if Shivansh was here, but I can share it again here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, I'll just give you a heads up. Okay. Just gonna wait one more minute, uh, just so that if there are still folks joining, they can sign in for uh, the Piazza event. Um, just again, if you've joined recently, we're uh, going to be going through some interview tech material from Facebook and how you can prepare for the Facebook tech interviews. And I think this would be helpful for even other interview uh, interviews that you might be doing with different companies. If you have any questions, we're gonna try to leave time after each interview question that we discuss and even at the end for any kind of general questions. Uh, but if there's something that you uh, wanna get clarified immediately, feel free to just uh, ask. Um, and we're gonna have one more presenter from Facebook joining us, Shivansh. So we're also waiting for him. Uh, he might be here like maybe in, in two more minutes, uh, but if not, we can go ahead and get started.
Okay, I'm just going to move forward with the rest of the presentation for now. So um, I'm Pooja Kankani. I am a software engineer on the Rooms Creator Experience, which is under the Messenger organization. Um, I think when you join Facebook, you go through like this bootcamp process. And so you can uh, try out different teams from Messenger, Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, and then you kind of get to pick uh, a team, whichever that you're interested in. So this is the team that I'm really interested in. It's like a newer product, and um, I really like the team. Um, I graduated UIUC last year in May with a bachelor's in computer engineering. Um, and a minor in technology and management. Uh, after that, I joined Facebook in uh, July of last year. So I've started remotely and I've been working virtually from home uh, from the beginning. I feel like that's been a kind of weird process, just like getting to know everybody on the team, but like not in person. Um, but I have met, uh, or I haven't met any of the people on my team, but I have been uh, in the Facebook campus before because I interned at Facebook uh, a year before that. And at that point, I was working um, on an infrastructure team. So it was more close to the, the data center layer of Facebook and working to make sure everything uh, in the network layer was working fine for um, Facebook. And we're going to have Shivansh, uh, who's running a few minutes late, but he's on messaging payments for WhatsApp. He's a software engineer, and I think he did his master's from UIUC. Um, and he grad, I think he's been at Facebook for maybe two years or a little bit more. Um, and yeah, he's going to be joining us shortly. Uh, till then, I'll just continue with like uh, what we're going to be doing in this talk. So we're here to help you uh, prep for your upcoming interviews, whether that's for Facebook or for any other company in general, because I think the interview process and the technical questions you get are kind of similar irrespective of which company you're interviewing for. Uh, and I feel like a lot of the things we discuss here today should be applicable to all of them. Um, so we're going to go through some interview prep material, a little bit more about the work we do, uh, some resources, um, and then I guess just the Piazza code with the next steps where if you check in with us on Piazza, uh, the recruiters can inform you about future opportunities with Facebook whenever we're hiring for uh, different roles. I think that's a good way to stay in touch. Uh, other than that, you can always uh, check out like the Facebook careers page to know and apply online. Um, yeah, this meeting is for you. If you have any questions, feel, feel free uh, to interrupt and let me know and I'll do my best to answer those. All right, so how do you prepare for a technical interview? I think there's three main components whenever you're thinking about the interview, the process, which I think differs from company to company. Uh, so I think at Facebook, we have our own process of how the interviewing process is. Uh, for the material, I think it's mostly general for most interview for most technical companies. Um, and I think knowing that material really well helps when you are uh, doing those interviews just to feel more confident and prepared. And then the third part is like how you communicate with the interviewer. I feel like that's also really important because most of the times it's not about getting to the right solution and getting to it fast. It's about going through your thought process um, as you go through the, uh, the question that you're trying to discuss with the interviewer. So we're going to be try we're going to try and cover all uh, three of these here in this uh, workshop today, and we're going to be talking a little bit about the process at Facebook, the material that you should be familiar with, and then how you can communicate uh, during the interview. But I think it all comes down to practicing. Uh, I feel like that's the key uh, to acing those interviews. You have to practice a lot. I think I did a lot of lead code when I was doing like the interview uh, prep for different companies. And I feel like the more you practice, the more comfortable you feel with um, the entire uh, recruiting process and, and the better you do eventually. Um, all right, so for the goals of a coding interview, I think what, the interviewer tries to get to is knowing, uh, understanding how you're thinking through the problem, even if it's like a really complicated problem. And by the end of this, at the interview, you're not at an ideal solution. I think what really matters is how you're breaking down that problem into more solvable components and then going through those um, and trying to solve those if efficiently, even if you can't come up with like the full entire solution. So how you're thinking and how you're uh, breaking down these hard problems is really important. One more thing is whenever you're doing interviews, 
the interviewer wants to know more about the trade-offs that you are thinking about, uh, memory versus like the runtime. So are you using too much space or are you, is your memory, like is your runtime not as efficient and addressing those upfront. So what I like to do is anytime I uh, do an interview question, I always, upfront mention that okay, like this is what the runtime is and this is how much memory we're using and say if it's not the most efficient solution I try to mention that okay maybe we could improve the runtime from O of n squared to O of n or O of n log n so just like discussing those things and like showing that you understand the engineering trade-offs that you're making is really important. Um, like I said, communication in these technical problems is a big part of like the interview and making sure that the interviewer is understanding how you're thinking through it, not just like coming up with the solution. Um, and it's okay to not know things. I know so many times like people feel um, really bad or like they, they just stress out too much. If you've, you're faced with a question which you've never heard of before and you're completely clueless how, how, about like how to go about it. And I feel like it ha it's happened to all of us at some point or the other. Uh, but I think in these moments, like what I try to do is like completely forget all of those voices inside your head and just know that it's okay to not know something. Uh, but then the interviewer helps you kind of come up with a solution if you're communicating with them effectively and trying to break down that problem into more uh, easier parts about what you understand and what you're struggling with and just like communicating throughout the interview is really important. All right, so um, for what you should do for these technical interviews is not try to build something up from scratch. It's more about knowing your data structures and using them efficiently. So if you have an interview question, you shouldn't try to like do something completely different and like completely out of the box because we have a limited amount of time for the interview. It's usually 45 minutes approximately. So you don't wanna get stuck in like designing your own like um, custom solution. It's more about uh, realizing that problem could be broken down into like different data structures. And I think one more advantage of using these data structures is that it's like a common vocabulary among software engineers. So if I'm talking about a linked list, you know exactly what a linked list is. And so I think it's easier to communicate that way instead of like, if I'm trying to build up something completely from scratch, I think it's harder to explain, harder to implement in the given amount of time. And I think most programming languages have these data structures implemented really well. So you should try to use them whenever you can. The goals of a coding interview. So, uh, what the interviewer is essentially trying to know from the interview is like, do you know these basic data structures and how you can use them? Do you know different algorithms and how you can implement them? I don't think memorizing algorithms is the way to go just because like, I think the problems never just like implement this algorithm. It'll be twisted a little bit for you to be able to use that algorithm that you know and cater it to the, the problem that you're trying to solve. So. I think it's really important to understand why it works the way it works. And I think it's also useful uh, when you're trying to analyze the runtime of your solution. If you've done, if you've understood different algorithms before and you kind of understand how to analyze those, uh, you can use that for your own solution and come up with like the trade-offs that we were talking about before, about like so that you can analyze the runtime and present that to the interviewer upfront. Uh, so yeah, discussing the complexity, space and time trade-offs. Uh, using common library functions are fair game. So like you don't have to reinvent a new, a, like a basic kind of data structure or like a library function, like you should feel free to use them unless the interviewer explicitly says not to use them. Um, and then specific questions about like really in-depth, uh, like in-depth questions about specific concepts is really rare unless you've stated that on your resume or you've mentioned that to your interviewer saying that you you have a lot of knowledge about this subject you shouldn't be like you wouldn't be questioned too much about it so uh you shouldn't have to worry about specific concepts or specific topics like that so it's more generally like about data structures and like knowing your your algorithms well so you kind of know how to break down the problem into more smaller chunks and solve them and communicate while you're doing that 
Um, yeah, so unless you claim to be an expert for that concept, you wouldn't be questioned about it. So don't worry too much about like different technical like uh, terms and things like that uh, for, for these kind of interviews. Hi, Pooja. It looks like Shivansh is here. Hey, Shivansh. Hey, guys. Super sorry for being this late. Uh, yeah, but sorry. If you want me to share my screen, Pooja, let me know and then I can do that. I um, I think it's working fine. So we'll just continue like this. Do you want to do a quick intro? And I think we've come, you've come at the right time. So you are going to cover this section. So it's perfect. All right, perfect. All right. Hey, guys. Um, I'm, I'm Shwanj. I have been a software engineer at Facebook for almost two years now. So I did both my undergrad and my grad from UICCS. I did the BSMS program. And the cert at Facebook, I have primarily been working on the team supporting the back end for WhatsApp payments in India. And so before that, I had interned at Facebook as well. So when we come to questions, feel free to ask me anything about my experience at UIUC, Facebook, or just software engineering or interviews in general. All right. Um, so yeah, so my, my major was computer science. I saw someone ask me in the chat. Yep. All right. So, so yeah, getting started with the format of a coding interview, right? So, um, so yeah, if you, yeah, so the main, uh, the main idea of a coding interview, of course, uh, is the technical questions which they're asking you, but there's also the intro, right? That you just learn about your interviewer and you share your past experiences. As an, as an interviewer, they'll, they're always curious to know what is the background which you're coming from so that they can tailor your questions. For example, if someone, is a freshman who's interviewing and there's a particular problem which then able to get at, then the interviewer has that context that what kind of background this person has in or, or maybe if they had to tailor the question a bit and so only if it's like a senior interviewing for a particular position then the formal expectations are not that different but then that just helps the interview and just getting to know the interviewer on a slightly personal level um encourages you also makes it easier for you also to ask them about their experience and learn about the company like interview is just not about not just about them learning about you it's also about you getting a chance to ask them any questions about working in the company or whether that company is the right fit for you so um so yes yeah, so that's usually the intro part and then coding is majority of the time of course spent completing the coding questions and so usually the interviewer whenever the interviewer comes in they usually have like one or two questions in mind so if they have two questions, they ideally want to get through those two questions. And of course, in some cases, what might happen is, let's say they're in their mind, they have allocated 15 minutes for each question. What can happen is that you are very quickly able to solve the first question. So they, uh, so they could think of giving you some add-ons to that. So that's like making it slightly more complex, but that is more of a thing um, just to see, just out of curiosity. And sometimes that is not being evaluated. So interview could stop you when you, if you're stuck on that more complicated part and then move on to second, move on to the second question. So don't, don't worry if the interview is stopping in the middle of the question, they will often tell you upfront as well. And even if you are thinking about a specific strategy and they stop you, that's just to make sure that you're not going off track because it, the interviews are usually like 30 minutes or an hour. And so that's very limited time to be able to gather all the signals. So they just making sure that the time is efficiently used both for you and the interviewer. So yeah, as we shared our questions might have follow-ups. Um, so common follow-ups are like, oh, what is the space complexity or the time complexity of this? And once you have your implementation down, it definitely makes sure that you're testing your code, even if that's, it's like usually, even if you're writing a test, if you're writing your code in code or pad or something, Facebook interviewers at least will not ask you to run your code. So it will more of be like just you're manually running through it and you can put in comments that, hey, for example, at this iteration, the value of I would be this and in the second iteration would be so on. And so for as you're talking through your code, you can discuss it, analyze its performance as well. So yeah, and then um, as I mentioned, we use, Facebook uses, we uses Codepad, but we won't run any code because we know in that I interview usually like ends up being a high stress environment, even though we try to ensure that you are having a good experience. Um, so yeah, so we're not there to check that your syntax is hundred percent correct and your semicolon is there, or whether like or how to exactly use the sort library, because of course, like even I Google that on a daily basis or on an hourly basis, I have to split a string or sort something. I'm Googling how to do that in C. So we're not 
really going to be running your code just to make sure that you have the correct idea and you have a basic grasp of the language. And then at the end would be the Q&A where you have time to ask questions based on their personal experience. And like, even if you have some common background in the interview, you might share a bit about that as well. Can go to the next slide, please. All right, so steps to a successful coding interview, right? Um, so when the, as soon as the interviewer reads out the question to you, just, you can, you can reread it because that often as you're reading the question, um, there's one as first part is of course, when you're listening to the, the question and you can just read it out loud. And as you're reading it, you'll often run into cases where like, oh, this is what's confusing about the question. So you always want to have clarifications of the question before you actually jump into the code. So then ask questions about edge cases. So for example, if it's a number-based question, a very common uh, edge cases, oh, what about is zero possible input? Are negative numbers allowed? Or what is the maximum size of numbers which can come in? If it's like a linked list, or what about empty linked list? And other clarifying questions are, oh, is it a singly linked list or a doubly linked list and stuff like that? And definitely take your time to think about a solution, right? If, um, and you don't, obviously, you don't have to jump, um, you, you don't have to jump into the, you don't have to jump to like the most efficient solution. Like if the first solution which comes to your mind is a brute force solution, just talk through it, tell the recruiter, interviewer that, hey, all right, so the brute force solution for this would be this. And of course, as you're talking to that, at the back of your mind, you should have that going on. Or oh, what is, where are the ways I could optimize it? Or what else could I do here? So, and then start coding while explaining your entire thought process. Only if you can, like that's not a hard requirement. You can very much, it's very difficult for some people to multitask. And like I'm one of those, like I always prefer just explaining out my entire idea before, but like, again, it's a very limited time. So you want to make sure you're not going on about your idea itself for five, 10 minutes and then have very little time left for the implementation. So just give a brief overview of your idea and then you can start coding. Also, you, yeah, so don't worry if you run into trouble. Like if you're writing it and then you think of something, that's that's fine as well. Just just keep writing your code. And if you're going wrong somewhere or if you're going on the wrong path, the interviewer might interrupt you. And then it's possible that the, even the interviewer doesn't realize that this is a bug just because like, like that's just how it works, right? Like if you're to think of the solution on the fly and then when you're running through the test case, that's when you find a bug. But as long as at the end, right, you're talking about, you're able to reason about your solution and say, okay, identify the bug, then at that point you can improve it. And then just, yeah, iterate through the process. If you, in case you can do better with runtime or memory, or sometimes it's not even about, sometimes it's not even with runtime complexity. Sometimes it could just be as simple as, oh, you're going through this list twice. What about if you could only go through this list once, right? That's still a linear time complexity, but that's just sometimes like, Interviewers could have follow-up questions with that just to see like what are the other optimizations you could do. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do four different uh, run through four different interviewing questions now, and these are sample interview questions uh, that are supposed to give you an idea about how you go through um, like solving these questions and like how you should do exactly like the steps of the process that uh, Shivansh was talking about before, like whether that's analyzing the solution again, going through like different test cases to make sure that you're kind of thinking through uh, the different possibilities, how to ask those clarifying questions. Um, at the end of each question, we're gonna try to leave a few minutes for questions. So if you have any questions for a particular interview question, like you can always ask us then. Uh, so the first question we have here is, given two strings, determine if the strings are anagrams. So looking at this question, I think the first thing you want to do is repeat the question back. So for example, I just want to make sure I understand. So we're writing an algorithm to determine if two strings have the same letters. So you're just making sure that you understand the term anagrams and what it really implies. So for example, here it means if two strings have the same letters. And so once you understand that, like you want to still clarify the question a little bit more. So what language are the strings? Uh, how much memory can I use? So do you have any like memory constraints or is if that's not a, an issue, then maybe like you can uh, optimize for memory and like, or so if you're still, if you're using space, um, then I think the runtime you can be even better, but if you're not using space, maybe you have to compromise on the runtime a little bit. So that's like the engineering trade-offs that we were talking about before. Um, 
all, are all of the characters' letters. And then the fourth one here we have is how does case play a role? So for example, if you have uh, a large case A versus a small case A, would you consider those uh, to be the same letters? So I feel like these are clarifying questions you wanna ask upfront. So you're, you kind of know like the different edge cases the interviewer is thinking about. Uh, so moving on to the second step of the interviewing process, you wanna take some time to brainstorm a solution. Think of like the problem a little bit more, like what exactly is it asking? Uh, have you done something like this before? And like, how would you kind of break down this problem into thinking about solving it? Uh, so it's completely okay to take some time to think and then you start coding. Uh, I think at this point, it's also good to kind of um, convey before you start writing code like just go through like your thought process with the interviewer and like what you're thinking of doing so let's look at this um, coding example so uh, we have a function here and what it does is it takes two strings and we're sorting both of those strings in alphabetical order so like here, like a, like i said before like you can use these common library functions for example we're using the sorting function here i think if the interviewer has follow-up questions about the sorting maybe you can go into that more later if you have time but because that's not the focus of this question we can just use sort to sort those strings alphabetically and then we go through the length of the first string and then at each point we compare, are the letters the same? Because they're already sorted, they should be alphabetically, if they're anagrams, they should have uh, the, same, um, the same letter at each index. So we're checking if string one uh, and string two have the same letters at the same uh, index. And if that's not true, we return false. And uh, at the end of that, if, if there's no, if we've never returned false, that means we've never come across a letter at the same index, which is different, uh, we return true. So I think this is possibly a first solution that someone would think of. And at this point, we wanna go through uh, some example strings to see if we have covered all the edge cases here and if, if this would work for all kinds of strings. So the first thing, for example, we can try with string one draw and string two ward. So when you sort this, we're gonna have A, D, uh, W, R, and so we're gonna like, so I think we're gonna have both string one and string two, they're both the same length here. And so we're gonna, if you go through, uh, if you run your solution through this for loop, for example, you're gonna see that uh, we're never gonna hit a case where um, string one and string two have different letters after they're sorted at the same index. So we're gonna return true. And in this example, that works out. So this, these strings are anagrams and that's what our function says. So it works out fine. But what about this here? So now we have taken strings of two different lengths, face and faces. So here's string one, is of a shorter length than string two. And clearly these are not anagrams because they don't have the same letters. So faces has S at the end, which face doesn't have. So over here, our function should return false if it, if it is working correctly. But then if you look through this, we're gonna go through like the entire length of string one. So we go till the fourth index. Until then, everything seems to, so we go, for zero, one, two, three, until then everything seems to match. So we're gonna return, we're never gonna return false, which means at the end of this, we're gonna return true, but that's not, these strings are not anagrams. So we found an edge case for which our solution here doesn't work. And so we wanna see, okay, so we're, we're seeing that it, it isn't working for strings of different lengths. So how can you uh, fix that? And so here we have, an addition to our initial uh, solution where we're saying we find out the length, length of the string. So face is four and faces is five. And immediately we check if the length isn't the same for both of those strings. These can't be anagrams, so we return false immediately. Otherwise, if they're of the same length, we continue with the, the process, like the function we had before. So here, uh, I think just running through those examples helped us understand that this isn't a solution that's gonna work for all kinds of strings. And so we, we added, uh, we found that edge case and we added the length check in the beginning to make sure that we're not um, going, we're not returning the wrong answer here. Um, so now, I guess every time you do a solution, you should do a runtime analysis for uh, your problem and for the solution that you've come up with. So for example, in our case, let's say the length of the string was n. Uh, we had 
we had two steps in the main algorithm. We were sorting the strings, which at best we would do o, o of n log n. And then the second part was iterating over the length of the string, which is just O of n, because you're going through it linearly. And our algorithm's uh, runtime is defined by the slowest step that we have. So over, or, over here, the, the algorithm is bounded by the string sorting, which if it's O of n log n, that's what the runtime of our solution is. For space, we didn't use any space because we're not storing the strings anywhere like that. So uh, we're just doing it in, uh, like we're not using any extra space. So I think this is, um, yeah, this is just go like going through that runtime analysis at the end is definitely really helpful to convey to your interviewer that you kind of understand uh, these parts of the interviewing process as well. All right, do we have any questions for this interview question? Yeah, Puja, I think some people have a message, some questions on the chat. Oh, can so, you read them to me? I can't see it because because uh, I'm sharing the screen. I can't see any of the Zoom features. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, so he so asked if uh, that sort uses O of n space, right? So, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so depends on the sort algorithm we're using, right? So if you're mm -hmm. doing in place sort, then runtime best runtime would be O of n square. Um, but if you're doing um, if you're doing if you are using memory. Uh, then I think it's going to be linear space and then end log and runtime. So right. I think over here, because we're using sort str1, like we're restoring it in the same space, like str1 itself. So we're not really assigning it to uh, a different like memory space. So we're actually, yeah. So I think we're not using any space, but then the sorting would probably be O of n square. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then, uh, but yeah, I mean, end of the, uh, yeah. So, and then other questions are, what if you treated it through the first string and uh, removed each of its letters from the second string? If the length of the second string at the end is zero, then there are anagrams. Um, yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a fair approach, but um, how do you go about removing each letter from the second string, right? At, at, at that point, you have to again and again iterate through the second string to find it. So you, so you either sort it first which at which point you again get this, um, which is the blocking point that you're still getting the same, similar runtime. And if you don't sort it, then your search would always be linear. Um, then the other questions are also, shouldn't we check if they're equal before we sort it? Yeah, here are the solution which Pooja has shared. We are checking the length before sorting them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then someone said you could reduce the runtime with the dictionary implementation. Yeah, there, you also, guys, this is not the one and done solution. Like there are a lot of different solutions for this. I know um, like even if you go to any lead code problem, right? There are a lot of different problems and uh, solutions to each problem. And there's no one solution which you're looking for. In fact, if your solution is a bit different from what the interviewer is expecting, that's actually like, actually challenges the interviewer and they, they would be more interested in your solution to ensure it works. And um, they would rather be more intrigued. So. They're asking, were we given that the two strings have to be different? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, that you were not, you were never guaranteed that the two strings have to be different. So that's a good clarifying question to ask the interviewer. Yeah, so that's something, yeah, that's something which you can ask the interviewer. And then of course you can add, if the interviewer says that the two strings could be the same, then, then that's a check, a check you could add that if length one is not equal to length two or string one is equal to string two, and then you can um, do that check. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other questions, guys? Yeah, I think just to reiterate what Shivan said, like this is just one of the solutions we have here, but like, I think with the same runtime complexity, you can have multiple kinds of solutions. So like, this is just one example, but then anytime you're doing any interview questions, it's good to brainstorm like different solutions for like optimizing the space or the runtime and like going and thinking about those things um, and just yeah, looking at different different kinds of solutions for those. Okay. If not, Shivansh, do you want to move to uh, the second question? Yep. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So the second question is just given a tree, determine if it is a binary search tree. So I've, I'll, yeah, so, so yeah, so immediately at the first step of the process, 
asking clarifying questions, reading through the reading through the question. So, what is the binary search tree? If you if you're a bit uncertain, just make sure to clarify uh, uh, or like hide. Or if you have any questions about that, or like how's the tree structure represented? Um, whether it's uh, whether it has um, whether it has two way connections or or however if you can only go to the leaf from the parent. Um, there are multiple approaches here, right? You can use an iterative approach. You can use a recursive approach. Um, think about the complexity of your code because your code should be easy to understand as well. And, and then you should also, of course, take into factor what approach are you more confident about? If you're more confident about the iterative approach, then go with that, right? And then you can obviously then you can always follow up with a recursive approach um, if you think if you if it in improves the runtime or something significantly and then you or you can just even talk out about that approach and um, then go through it and then what think about what is the runtime of your solution how much memory does it use and that way you will know upfront so if something if something is using like o of, o of n square of, o of n cube or something then interview would usually ask you that hey are you sure that's the best like even a proof sometimes even a even the, sometimes you could have thought of a smart solution but it's possible that if you go the brute force route, brute force route might be slightly faster. All right, so we can go to the next slide. So, so the interview will give you examples as well. Sometimes they have examples written out. You could also ask for examples. Um, so never hesitate to ask interviewer to just draw it out. So here there's a tree given, and then to so just ensure. So for example, for the first one, we are seeing um, for the first one. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, for the first one. We do see that's a binary search tree because everything is um, everything to the left of a parent. Every child node to the left of the parent is smaller than it. Everything right to it is bigger than it, and recursively so on. But on the second example on the right side, we see that um, ten is bigger than nine, even though it's on the left side. So we know that one is not a binary search tree. So now coming to the solution, I'm sure by now a lot of you have some solution in your mind already. So again, this is just one of the potential solutions. This is not the one and done thing. So um, yeah, and then, so here we have just defined a helper method um, within our main solution. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's simply just checking. Uh, so the idea here is that you just iterate through, your, iterate through your tree recursively and then make sure that it's always less than the max and more than the min. So, so when you're calling the main tree, so it says when you call when you call with your root node, then you just go in. So especially with, with your root, right? So your, so your minimum will be minus infinity, and your maximum will be infinity, right? Because there's no limit; like it could be on either side of that. Then, if node is none, then you just that means you have reached your leaf node at that point. Of course, that's a binary search tree. Anything empty is a binary search tree by default. Um, and then you just check for each node that that the value should be less than min, and or or if it's if like if it's less than min, then of course it's not a binary search tree. If it's greater than max, then it's not a binary search tree. And there's also a clarifying question you could ask your recruiter here, the ask you, sorry, an interviewer here that what about if there are two values, uh, two nodes with the equal value? How does and in that case, what do they expect the sorry, uh, what do they expect the return value to say? And then basically, yeah. So once you have, and then trees, right? Usually you're just doing recursive. So once you have done it on on the root node, then you check it on its left child, and then you check it on its right child. And here, since we're going for boolean, we just add the two, and we get a solution. So I think that's about it here. Yeah. So yeah, any questions or thoughts, comments about that? So here, uh, if we were to do a runtime analysis. Um, that would just be O of n because essentially we're just going through each node once. And then if you were to do a space analysis, um, when you look at it, um, when you look at it upfront, you think that there's no extra space being used, but in recursive functions, you have to account for the space of the call stack. So here, when you see, when you do recursive, um, essentially you could, at one point you could have as many method calls as the height of the tree, right? So you could have a lo log in, uh, you would have a log in space here, space complexity here. Right. 
looks like no one has any questions about that. So either I explained it really horribly or too well. Uh, but I think at this point, we can also take a pause because we do have two other questions which we can run through. So, but I feel like at that point, we might also run out of time for the session. So if people have any questions, just in general about the interview process or how to prepare for it or anything about Facebook, which Pooja and I can help answer. Um, now is also a good time to just uh, for you guys to ask those questions. Uh, someone asked, wouldn't it be O of N space since we don't know if it's balanced? Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that was given in the question. That is something you can ask. Um, that's something you can either ask the interviewer or you can give as a Say as a disclaimer that if it's a balance tree, it would be a login, login space. If it's not a balance tree, then it's O of N. Um, so Pooja, do you want to answer this question? What resources are good good to help prepare for coding interviews? Yeah, sure. Um, I think what I personally used a lot was lead code, uh, just practicing a lot of different lead code questions. And like, I think you start off with easy just to like build your confidence. And like, as you get, you start getting those, you move to the medium questions and like maybe a little bit of the hard ones as, as well. But I think for most of the interviewing uh, that I've done, I've seen like medium questions for most of the interviews. So I feel like that's a good level to be comfortable at. Uh, yeah, just practicing a lot, I think, is really helpful. Um, I think, um, like, not just coming up with your own solution, but then, like, going through other people's solutions as, as well and, like, trying to understand, like, did they do it in a better way? Like, is there kind of analyzing their solutions and, like, understanding the, the runtime and the space complexity and stuff there as well helps, like, build that up slowly. Um, yeah, I think other than that, if you're not a fan of lead code, like, Hacker Rank is good. And then I think just doing those interviews like is a good way to practice and like get in that mindset so just interviewing and practicing along the way helps a lot yeah yeah so to add on to that i think um a common rabbit hole which a lot of people fall down is oh i have a facebook interview coming up i'm just going to go through and do all the facebook interview questions on lead code so that could often be an issue because whether it's facebook google microsoft anyone right any of these big companies as soon as we know that, hey, this question is out there, this question which you're asking interviews out there, that question most likely is not being used in interviews anymore. Companies are very good about being aware of what's out on lead code. And the idea, of course, was that, like, if we ask you a question, which you already know, and then you just basically just take that solution, like which I just remembered, that, is, that does not help anyone. That does not give a good signal to the interviewer. And whether irrespective of how well crafted your response is, usually interviewers are able to tell that this is a question you have seen before and practice this exact question and practice this exact solution. So if you have seen a question before, also just like tell the interviewer. So yeah, so don't fall into the trap of interview doing interview prep for a specific company or doing questions just tag for a specific thing. Just do questions in general. And yeah, as Pooja said, lead code helps. And then another thing is like, if you are already good at lead code, like if you're already doing problems really well, something um, which people often fall to, and I, I did it a lot, especially as I was a sophomore and juniors, that even though I could solve the questions, I was just not sure how to explain them well in an interview, I would, I would freeze. So, so it's, very, it's a very good idea to just mm, do like whiteboard interviews, just practice with your friends, and especially whether that's virtual or in person, you can see, and then basically just like you help, you do a mock interview for someone and they would do a mock interview for you. That would be super helpful. So the next question we have is from Nishant, like, do you have any general advice on how to stand out on your application and make it to the interview phase. So, yeah, Pooja, you can go. Um, I think having projects that you worked on as part of your school, like not just like in terms of coursework, but then if you've done projects in Hack Illinois or like other hackathons and uh, different projects that you've done outside of coursework also helps a lot to show that you're truly passionate about building something and uh, in the engineering aspect of things. So I feel like just having different kinds of projects on my resume helped me a lot. I think that also helps um, drive conversation with the interviewer. So if you talk about different things you've worked on before and implemented before, or like collaborated with a group 
on. I think that kind of gives the interviewer more signal about uh, not just like the technical aspect of what you know, but like also that you can collaborate with people and like communicate effectively with other people and like build something as a team, which I think is really important in the corporate world. You're not running the product alone or the company alone. There's a lot of people that you're working with. So I feel like to stand out, like, yeah, just the kind of projects that you're putting on, um, the skills that you have, I think are, are really important. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, right. to, to make it to the interview phase, essentially the only thing, especially like right now that now there's not those, no in-person conversations as such, right? No career for anything. Your resume is very important. So just make sure it's well-crafted and you're highlighting the important stuff. Like your courses should be, your courses should cover certain components that just shows like what kind of stream you're interested in, like what kind of, um, what kind of 400 level courses you're taking. And another, another just good thing is like, if you have friends who have interned at a company or something, you can ask them to refer you. That always helps. Like if they are, if, if they think you're good enough or like if they think you're interested in the company, they'll definitely refer you. You can also reach out to recruiters um, in advance. So like Facebook, for example, I know starts hiring very early on in the season. So like this, when, I, when I was interviewing for Facebook, um, I, I reached out to Rima in August. So that was like almost 10 months before the actual internship. So, so with big companies like Facebook, you can always reach out to the recruiter and show your interest in, in advance. And that, um, and that helps, um, and obviously that helps show your interest. So the next question is, um, other than standard algorithm or data structures questions, could you expect to get asked system design questions? So I think system design questions, at least at Facebook are not that common, especially since most of you will be interviewing for new grad roles, system design questions, are because at this point, I, at least from my experience, systems and questions are not providing that much signal. It's usually people are looking at like CTCI or something and then answering answers things based on that. When you're actually designing some systems and have some experience in the industry, at that point, as an experienced software engineer, it's slightly more helpful. But it's very rare for you to get asked systems and questions, especially in like interviewing questions, especially in internship interviews or new grad positions. Yeah. Is it um, Shreya Shah says it's bad to apply to multiple roles if I'm interested in both the software engineering and PM roles? You want to take that to you? Um, I think it's completely fine to apply to multiple roles. Um, I think there's no, like, I don't think anybody's sitting there and looking at like, oh, if you, you can only apply for one, so you should apply for whichever role you're interested in. Um, having said that, I feel like, um, it might be hard to prepare for both of those roles as you're trying to like do the entire interviewing process and everything like it might get a little too much so I feel like that's something that you should just be uh, aware of uh, and also I think uh, there's a lot of like there's a lot of movement usually within the company so say you start out as a software engineer but then you slowly realize like maybe a year or two into it that maybe you're more interested in product management for example like there's always ways within the company that you you can make that transition happen. You can work with your manager and your current team to, to switch roles. So I feel like um, it's not like the end of the world if you can, like if you only move forward in one path or something, because that uh, that switch can always happen, like even later uh, in, in the company itself. Yeah especially, yeah, especially if you're looking at something like applying for both software engineering and PM. At that point, I think you should also check uh, also ask yourself why you're applying for both roles. If it's the idea that you just want to find out which role is more appropriate for you, then you should use opportunities like this um, to talk with software engineers or product managers. And you can always reach out to them either on LinkedIn or just ask your recruiter to put you in contact with some just so that you understand the role and you understand which role you're more interested in. But as for Facebook, you can, uh, Facebook port jobs portal, I'm pretty sure that lets you apply to three roles and those three applications are are considered separately, but I think at the interview stage, um, in the in the, in the interview stage, you have to pick one role which you'll be interviewing for if you do get selected for multiple roles to interview for. So I know a lot of people apply for both software engineering and production engineering, and but but it's not like you can just have to um, um, you can't just have two interview uh, process going on in parallel. So that is also something which you can ask Prima, who's a Facebook recruiter for UIUC. Um, I don't ask how many steps are there in the interview process. So as far as I'm aware, for the internship, um, for the internship, there are two interviews. First will be a 45 minute interview. And then if you clear that, then again, there's just another 45 minute interview and that is it. And as for full-time roles, I think there's 
was this 45 minute interview and then there is uh four interviews i'm not puja did you do the full time interviews no i did the internship one as well which i had two interviews as well but i think from what i know it's usually four interviews uh for full time um and i think maybe the questions are a little bit more like advanced than the interview ones um but yeah i think in general like the uh the things that we covered before about how to go about the interview process i think is the same like you just want to make sure that you are conveying your thoughts to the inter interviewer irrespective of whether it's the internship or full time um and just like breaking down the problems and like going through so i feel like the process is overall the same at the full time is just more like the process is a little bit longer yeah and you can always on um, also facebook for recruiters are really helpful in helping you prepare for interviews so they will give you upfront idea of what exactly is the format who you'll be interviewing with when you want to schedule the interview even if you have scheduled the interview and then let's say you just get a bunch of classwork or you you mid terms come up or something and you need to reschedule or you just feel you're not ready you can always discuss that with the recruiter and that is not something which is considered as a negative point in your application or anything the recruiters the best it's in the best interest of recruiters and everyone involved that you're putting your best performance out there that way it ensures it's an optimal use for everyone's time um So Raghav asked, "How do these concepts in these questions relate to your work? Are these mainly to test one's ability to reason, or do they show up in the real world?" So, um, so yeah. So as uh, these questions, I think they are actually a mix of both. They do, uh, they are mainly your ability to reason, but they do show up in the real world. So just um, like sharing an example, actually from the recent work I did. So I had to design an entire system. wherein we were dynamically selecting the best performing um best performing partner for a particular thing so just um we had to basically then designing designing algorithms almost like an interview question kind of a thing wherein we have to design how to compare performance between two things if we have been given their success and failure numbers and at that point you want to ensure for example right that even if if a particular partner only has 10 samples versus someone else who has 500 samples you can't just do a percentage based comparison because that's not a fair comparison just having eight successes out of 10 versus having um having 400 successes out of 500 that is definitely that that doesn't just equate to like oh both are performing equally well you need to check um you need to use other smart ways to figure out um which one is actually performing better so it's that so they do show up in your real work but yeah mainly it's just your ability to reason and how you're able to uh, how you're able to approach problems and also about it's not just your ability to reason it's also about how you're working with someone because as a software engineer you're often working with multiple people in your role you're working with your product managers you're working with the data scientists you're working with the data engineers and a lot of these except and whom you have to explain your work to so that is why it's a critical part of the interview that you're able to explain your solution um explain your solution to the to the interviewer Anything you want to add there, Pooja? Um, no, I think yeah, it makes sense. It's actually a mix of both. Like for example, like in your real job, like you wouldn't get a question which says, uh, like, are these two strings anagrams? Like that's probably not what's going to happen. But I think the concepts you're using there and the understanding there, like, applies to different things that you're solving for your real job. So it's never as direct as an interviewing question, but you're always using things from those interviewing questions to like cater the solution to the problem you're solving in in your real job. Yeah, and Matthew asked a question: What would be a good problem distribution for lead code practice? For example, like ten percent easy, eighty percent medium, ten percent hard. Uh, Pooja, do you want to take that? Um, I can go over what I did. So I think when I started out, like when I was just beginning to get into like the interviewing prep zone, I started with like mostly doing easy questions and then maybe a few hard, uh, like a medium, like a few medium questions. And then once I got comfortable with the easy questions, I felt more confident and I thought I was able to like move on to the medium questions. So I feel like at that point, maybe I shifted to like doing eighty percent. Um, medium questions and then maybe like that 20% some days i would do the easy ones and some days i would try to do like the harder ones uh, till i felt more comfortable like being in the medium space and then like moving up like to the harder questions a little bit so i feel like it depends on what stage you're at and what you're feeling comfortable with uh, but i think medium questions is probably a good place to be in and to feel comfortable with for most of the interviewing uh, most of the interviews you're going to be doing for new grad roles or for internships Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I did the similar thing where I started with easy and then 
did media imagine when I was comfortable with them. Um, so there's another question. For those who don't go to your target school and hence have no recruiter, how should we contact a recruiter? So as, as you should be able to contact any Facebook recruiter um, and they can put you in contact with, uh, with the particular recruiter. So there are no, I, I, at least as far as I'm aware, there's no target school per se. It's like once you're in the Facebook system, like all recruiters are there to help you. So definitely check into the Piazza, Piazza link, which is for this event. And that just ensures that your system is there and that the recruiters are able to reach out to you if, you're, if your profile is of interest. Um, you can also go to the facebook.com slash careers link. I think they always post whatever job openings they have there. So that's just applying online is a good way to get uh, an, a recruiter to reach out to you. Um, I, I think sometimes it might feel like when you're applying online, it's just like a black box and you're not sure like if anybody is looking at your resume or if anything's even happening from applying online. And I feel like it's frustrating at points, but like trust the process. I feel like at the end of the day, like it goes through, like you apply a lot and then some places do look at your resume and then some places give you an interview and then you finally land a job. So like, I think the, the, I think you should always apply a lot and uh, just trust the process that there's someone at the other end, like going through uh, the applications and like somebody will reach out to you. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, it can just be daunting if you don't have, like you don't know the exact recruiter you're supposed to reach out to, but applying online is, is probably the best thing you can do. Yeah. And then uh, like Aaron had a question, if we do bad in an interview, when we apply later following semester or year, do they still see the bad interview or take it into account? I think the interview record might still be there, but it's definitely not taken into account. If I'm applying again a year after, that's like that's a fresh performance because of course people change a lot, people develop technical skills over the course of a year. So it's not taken into account. It's just the caveat is that I think if you if you don't get um uh, if you don't get selected um after an interview stage. I think the recommended idea is that you wait for a year or at least like until the next recruiting season to apply again. And at that point you should be, you would be concerned again. But I mean, that's, that usually lines up with people's expectations as well, because if you're interviewing in fall, usually then at, in the spring, usually Facebook is not hiring because at that point they usually wrap up their hiring. So again, then you can just apply again in summer or fall. And then, yeah, of course you have that much more experience and you've developed your technical skills. So you should be good. Um, Neil is asking any advice on how to go about recruiting season during the pandemic. Anything you have for this, for this Pooja? Um, I feel like the process is probably the same. Like even like, I think there's some companies that might not be hiring as much, but there's some other companies that are hiring a lot because of the pandemic. So I feel like um, just again, applying a lot and applying like in different kinds of companies is helpful. Um, I used to have LinkedIn, I like I used to keep track on LinkedIn to see if there's different like companies posting about their um, uh, their like openings and stuff like that. And then even like following their career websites to see if there's any opening so you can get notified and you can apply early. I think that's one more thing that that is really helpful because I think towards the end, what happens is there's a lot of applications and then like fewer fewer seats left. So if you apply a little bit early for some companies that have rolling admissions, I think that really helps uh, just applying online and applying early, I mean. Um, yeah, and I feel like the rest of the process is probably uh, the same. Um, you can always reach out to people to refer you to companies and uh, try to find people on LinkedIn who have been working at the company or who can, like your previous connections or like finding recruiters at the company who can kind of keep you informed and in the loop for uh, different openings that are coming up. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, the thing is like, one thing which I feel like has changed a bit is their discovery of companies. like pre-pandemic you could um uh, pre-pandemic you could very easily just find companies in your career fair or something so just um just keep yeah just that just like look out for all the employers which are there for hack Illinois or take virtual career fairs just still make sure to go through the list and see um if you're interested in someone just go and apply to them online or something so because it's not right there in front of you so i know that can happen um romer asks if you're not a cs major is that a, dis a disadvantage um i honestly don't think so i do have a lot of colleagues who are not CS majors and they are software engineers at Facebook. Um, the primary idea is that you just show that you have that technical skill and technical ability and you have done those projects in your resume. So as long as you're showing that, 
you will get through to the interview stage and then once you're at the interview stage it's it does not it's not it does not matter whether you're cs major or not everyone just evaluated the same way and based on how you are your technical ability there yeah i think we are right on time as well so if people have any other questions feel free to share um otherwise i think we can wrap up yeah, and then just check in on the Piazza code. Uh, I think this is how the recruiters can reach out to you if there's any uh, future openings or any updates that happen in the recruiting cycle. So if you've attended this event and you want to hear more from the recruiters or just stay in loop for the Facebook hiring process, just check in here. Yeah, thanks everyone. Just really thanks everyone for attending. I know there are a lot of like Zoom sessions so just, just going on in your life I had met for the past year and has probably gotten super tiring. So hopefully this was a good use of your time and you were able to gain something out of it. And we wish you luck for your Facebook interviews or your any, any interviews coming up and hope a lot of you apply to Facebook in the future. Yeah, best of luck, everyone.